Happy Valentine's Day, and there is no better occasion than to talk about the love trade today. Joining me now is Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors. Frank, good to see you again. Great to see you, and to and everyone Frank, out there. I feel the love, Frank, and I think since I've known you, which is you know close to 10 years now, the first interview we ever did 10 years ago, you taught me about the love trade and how it relates to gold, and it's still relevant today. So for those of us, for those of viewers who may not have heard about it yet, tell us what it is and why gold investors should follow the love trade. Well, there's two drivers to the price of gold. Uh, the fear trade, which dominates the psychic of North Americans, and the love trade, which is China, India, factually known as Chindia, the Middle East. Uh, the 60% to 70% of all gold demand is based on love. Uh, and that that is what is the key long-term factor. And what drives the love trade is rising GDP per capita. And what have we seen in the past 18 years is in China and India is a phenomenal 45 degree angle in rising GDP per capita. And the, just the absorption of gold out of those countries is phenomenal. And speaking about China and India now, uh, Frank, is the love trade present now? What are we seeing on the jewelry demand end there? It still remains robust and sometimes it's getting blurred uh, of the pickup in Hong Kong demand uh, for gold. Is it going for China's uh, government's buying gold or is it really as another way going in for, the, for that love trade? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not aware of the, it's not as explicit as it used to be. But I, I think what's important for investors to recognize is there's now we have a company called Monet. Uh, Monet allows you to buy 24 karat gold jewelry. And that's what most people do from the Middle East to India to China, Southeast Asia. They buy 24 karat gold jewelry. And Monet allows you to buy 24 karat gold jewelry at a modest markup. They deliver it like as Amazon comes to your home. So I, I think that uh, North Americans are going to start uh, appreciating not a 500% markup of the price of gold. Frank, finally, I know we spoke uh, not too long ago about your outlook for, for gold prices. Uh, you were bullish um, on the metal. Um, has anything changed uh, since then? I know we've come down a bit since those strong rally we had at the start of the year. Yeah, we, we had a strong rally and it sort of faded off with the Chinese New Year, which historically happens. Uh, and, uh, and I think that we'll, it'll pre resume again. Uh, gold's up today. It has a lot with the dollar. Rates have peaked. Uh, the fear that rates will go up short term. But overall, car loans are down. Housing is still struggling. So I don't th think that you're going to see the uh, long end of the yield curve rise dramatically. Uh, and that means that the dollar is going to basically peak. Uh, and that bodes well for, for gold for the fear trade people. Frank, does uh, it surprise you that we have the rally come down um, right after the Chinese New Year? I mean, shouldn't that demand still be robust? Yes, but you, historically there's a pickup of people buying gold in China for gift giving during the holidays. And so now they have to go through this sort of thaw and they go, unless gold goes on sale, uh, which, like we, which we have for uh, in, in Boxing Day for buying shoes and socks and things of that nature, there's no Boxing Day for the price of gold, right. uh, gold jewelry. Frank, I appreciate your thoughts. I'll see you soon uh, at the BMO Capital Markets Conference in uh, sunnier weather in Florida. So look forward to that. And happy Valentine's Day, Frank. Happy Valentine's Day to all our viewers. And we'll be back tomorrow. Lots of love.